Hello everyone, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Dr. Steven Roth, and I'm a board-certified oral and maxillofacial pathologist. April is Oral Cancer Awareness Month. This month, I've been posting weekly videos with topics specific to oral cancer and recognition of those out there diagnosing or diagnosed with oral cancer. Today's video will discuss how oral cancer is reported after surgery. First, we have to get into that disclaimer, and that is that all opinions expressed in this video are mine and mine alone, and do not represent any organization that may employ me or that I may belong to, and that this video is for educational purposes only and should not serve as medical advice. Should you have any concerns about your oral or systemic health, please see your nearest oral or systemic health care provider. And with that being said, let's get into today's video. The first thing we have to discuss are the different types and intentions behind pathology reports. The first type of report is the biopsy report, and the intention behind a biopsy report is usually to help establish a diagnosis. The second type of report is the surgical resection report. This report takes place after the time of surgery when the diagnosis has already been established. Therefore, the goals of this report are a little bit different. I'll be discussing this concept in regards to oral cancers. Usually the surgical reports contain something called a synoptic summary. A synoptic summary is an entire overview of every important detail of the surgery from a microscopic view. This summary will help to define the stage of the cancer as well as help determine if additional or adjuvant chemotherapy or radiation is required. Synoptic summaries are specific for each site in the body and are standardized by the College of American Pathologists, or CAP. In fact, synoptic summary templates for every body site are available on the CAP website. CAP is constantly updating their synoptic summaries as new guidelines from the American Joint Commission on Cancer, or AJCC, are released. The AJCC is the governing body that determines how cancers are staged they are constantly looking at the data to determine how to best group patients into stages based on survival data and treatment efficacy. This video is filmed in April of 2022. So depending on when you're watching this video, some of the statements may be out of date at the time you're watching it. I encourage you to consult the most current AJCC manual and CAP synoptic summaries available on their website for the most up-to-date information. A typical synoptic summary for oral cancers will include different subsections. The first section describes the surgery as a whole. The specimen section is where the treatment is entered. The tumor section describes all aspects of the gross or macroscopic tumor as well as the microscopic tumor. Macroscopic means visible to the eye and microscopic means visible under the microscope. This information includes where the tumor was found, what anatomic location, what side of the body, and if it was only one location or multifocal. It includes measurement of the specimen and the tumor itself. It includes the diagnosis as well as a description of the grade or how differentiated the histology was. For squamous cell carcinomas, it includes depth of invasion. So I need to spend some time discussing depth of invasion, as it's very important in reporting these cancers, as it helps determine the staging. Depth of invasion is a measurement perpendicular from the basement membrane of the nearby normal epithelium down to the deepest portion of the carcinoma. This is in contrast to tumor thickness, which is the measurement from the top of the epithelium down to the bottom of the tumor. This is an important distinction, and when reporting depth of invasion, make sure you are not confusing it for tumor thickness. These images are really helpful and taken directly from the current version of the CAP synoptic summary as of April 2022. The last part of the tumor section includes reporting of perineural invasion, or whether or not cancer was found wrapping around nerves, and lymphovascular invasion, or whether or not cancer was found within lymphoid or vascular channels. The next section is the margin section. This is the section where the distance from the invasive and or non-invasive component to the specific margins are reported. This is very important because sometimes a resection will look as though it's negative macroscopically or to the naked eye, but microscopically under the microscope, we may see tumor extending to the resection margin. Many times, a positive margin will require adjuvant chemo or radiation or revision surgery. 
The next section is examination of the lymph nodes, including total number, total number of involved lymph nodes, size of the largest metastatic deposit, and whether or not the tumor invaded the tissue around the lymph node. Finally, the last section is reporting of whether or not known distant metastasis is present away from the primary site. All of this information is used to establish the TNM staging, where T staging currently uses the size and extent of tumor, N uses size and extent of nodal involvement, and M reports whether distant metastasis has been identified. I recommend using the latest CAP synoptic as this area is often one that is always evolving. So there you have it, kind of a quick review of how a pathologist reports cancer after it has been removed surgically. It can be a long process, but it is so important to better provide the patient and their medical team with an understanding of their post-surgical prognosis, as well as to help determine if chemotherapy and or radiation therapy after surgery should be provided. Stay tuned on this channel as I continue to release weekly videos this month in honor of Oral Cancer Awareness Month, just like this one. Thanks again for watching and be well.